back to the super wet track of Portimao and Spa, testing this time GPUs. My last video, I did a comparison between wet and dry with the CPUs. Check that out if you wanna see a more thorough breakdown of the performance impact, and there was one especially measured at 1080p, isolating the CPU performance, we saw performance decrease. But in this video, with all these puddles, I want to see the impact on the graphics cards. So that's what we're gonna dive into today. Once again, my testing is going to be with class one graphic options selected within the iRacing uh, menu system. However, there are some quick things you can do to boost performance. I can see up to a 50% performance gain with a 3060 Ti by switching to these settings. So if you're running class one stock or you haven't explored turning down some of these or turning some of these even off, you can find some performance gains here. Another way to boost performance is using the render scaling option that iRacing has deployed. This is AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution. There are four settings for this. I believe this is FSR1 version uh, right now version three is out but that has frame generation in it so thankfully we don't have to worry about that ultimately iRacing is cpu bound and i'm using the 7800 x3d and all this testing if you were to take a fast car and pair it with a say a 10 600k you're going to be limited by that processor's ability so it's important to pair up a good gpu with a good cpu there are a lot of bars and numbers on this chart uh hit pause if it interests you Otherwise, let's move on with the show. I'm testing with six graphics cards today, including a 2070 Super. Shout out to Daniel, I bought it used from him. And this is actually advice, if you're buying used components and the dude kept the box, the original box for years, you can probably trust that seller. So a little, a little bit of advice there. Uh, here is the, the system configuration that I've set up. I'm still on 23H2. There's been some drama with 24H2, so I'm holding off on that for now at least. I'm testing again with class one graphic settings. These are pretty intense for the uh, older cards because of the MSAA samples four times but I did turn off object self-shadowing and dynamic shadows. SMP has been enabled when possible on the GeForce products. I've explored this issue at length in a previous iRacing video, so go check the link up above if you wanna see what that technology does. And here are the replay options. Again, I'm just mimicking what I showed you in the graphics. Okay, so we're just gonna dive right into the benchmarks, starting off with a dry versus wet comparison. On the right-hand side, this is where I'm gonna have all the parameters. I know some of them show multiple items. It's just Excel spreadsheets. I'll be running full fat native resolution unless set, stated otherwise, and SSR will be set to off. The 4080 Super leads the chart with a 15% advantage over the 7900 XTX and a 20% advantage over the 3080 Ti. A common question I always get in these GPU comparisons is how well would a 4070 perform in these benchmarks? And you should use the 3080 Ti as your reference. Simplistically, I would say the original 4070 is about 15% slower than the 3080 Ti. The fastest 4070, the Ti Super, is probably 50% faster and the 4070 Super is probably right around where the 3080 Ti is. There are architectural differences, memory differences, stuff like that. This is just a rule of thumb to help you gauge where it would fit in. Switching to a wet replay of a GT3 Spa race, we can see a substantial performance decrease across all of the graphics cards. The 4080 Super saw the biggest decrease in performance at 28%, while the 6700 XT from AMD only lost 12%. Just like in my CPU analysis video, I want to use another track. In this case, Portimao, still with GT3s, single 4K resolution, and the 4080 Super only has an 11% advantage over both the 3080 Ti and the 7900 XTX. The 2070 Super has a good showing in the dry, but when we go to wet, 
it's a different story. It tumbles to the bottom of the chart. Meanwhile, the 6700 XT climbs above even the 3060 Ti. All cards suffer from this extreme wet weather condition with lots of puddles, but the Radeons handle it a little better. The gap is only 2%, basically a margin of error between the 4080 Super and the 7900 XTX. That's kind of crazy, and look how much the 3080 Ti tumbled. It lost a whopping 37%, going from dry to wet. And now is a good time to talk about GPU busy. I have it included on all of the charts, and this is showing how active the graphics card is during each generation of frame. If it's close to 100%, that means it is fully maximized during that frame generation. The lower it is from 100%, the more idling time it might have. I say might because this is not a perfect science. For example, if we look at the 4080 Super, it's at 87% GPU busy, suggesting that if I had a 9800X 3D in here instead of a 7800X 3D, the graphics card has a bit more headroom to keep pace. With the 7900 XT, however, I, it's, it's hard to get it to hit 100%, but I do think this measurement is accurate because if I look at power usage, GPU clock, GPU utilization, they are not at the peak. They're not at the max. They, they look like they're 90%. So I do trust this value. And moving into triple screens and Radeon's lack of SMP, this is an important distinction to make. We're back at SPA, it's triple 1440p resolution. We're comparing dry versus wet. I trust you guys not to be overwhelmed by all this data. Without the GeForce cheat code with SMP, the 7900 XTX struggles. The 4080 Super enjoys a 58% advantage over the 7900 XTX in dry conditions and a 68% advantage in wet conditions. When we look at the GPU busy for the 7900 XTX, it has actually decreased from single 4K to triple 1440p. That doesn't really make sense. It's counterintuitive because the resolution has increased. I think what's happening here is that the 7900 XTX is basically following the CPU's cues for setting up the frames it has to make for each monitor. It's doing them sequentially, one at a time. It can't do them simultaneously like SMP enables on the GeForce. So we're actually stumbling into just the natural issue of what it takes to render three projections on three screens. The 7900 can complete the frames rapidly, but it can't overcome the latency of being queued by the CPU. At least that's my theory. Checking in with performance around Algarve and the numbers are pretty similar. It would be surprising that the 7900 XTX only loses 15%, but having just disclosed that it's struggling with the triples, it's got the extra GPU capacity to deal with the rain. So that's why the performance isn't as dramatic. The Portimao testing scenario is very different from Spa because it has deep puddles lots of reflections, and allows us to test iRacing's SSR, or screen space reflections. These look amazing, and in my CPU testing, I have shown them to be largely GPU generated. So let's look at the impact at single 4K with these puddles. Even with SSR off, you can still see some reflections, but they're not dynamic. And when you set it to low, that's when we start seeing cars and the trackside objects reflect. And with that comes a performance impact. But check this out. All of a sudden, the 7900 XTX is leading the chart, and the 6700 XT enjoys its biggest lead over the 3060 Ti so far. So clearly, there is an advantage with iRacing's deployment of rain with Radeon. There is an additional SSR setting at high, which is what the replay has been in all the slow-mo footage that I've shown you. And it's, I, I think it looks great, but it's also a bit too surreal. And the FPS impact by setting it to high, it's massive. And this percentage difference is not from low, it's from SSR off. And at the bottom, the 2070 Super, hits a 58% reduction in performance. Meanwhile, the 7900 XTX still wins this chart and is at negative 35%. All right, so let's go back to SPA. This time, a lighter rain. There are no puddles that I've noticed. And we get to see, once again, my favorite wreck of all my replays. And when we have low, there is still a performance impact with SSR, even though there's nothing reflecting as far as I know. 
the 7900 XTX, I guess it leads the chart by one of the smallest margins, a single frame per second, but hey, it is there. And when we flip SSR to high, again, this percentage is going to be relation to when it's off. We still see the 7900 XT leading the way. And surprisingly, the 6700 XT finished beneath the 3060 Ti in all of this. The percentage drops haven't been as significant, but there's also no reflections. So I'm disappointed to see this negative performance impact with iRacing. Don't charge me for the eye candy and give me no sweets. Okay, so let's push these graphics cards to their limits with triple screen. Again, triple 1440p, we're at SPA. When we turn on SSR low, look at that drop. It's 30% or more for almost all the cards except the 7900 XTX. It's got the muscle to put up with this extra workload from this reflection system. It's tied with the 3080 Ti and it's about 11% behind the 4080 Super. And when we flip the switch to high, we see that gain increase over the 3080 Ti and diminish to the 4080 Super. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the chart, it's still pretty much the same. 3060 Ti leading the way, 2070 at the bottom. It's kind of amazing the 7900 XTX only loses 4% between SSR off and SSR high in this scenario. So let's go to Portimao and see what happens. With reflections off, the 4080 Super had a 42% advantage over the 7900 XTX. But when we go to low, it's nil. It's basically nothing. And even though the 3080 Ti has the SPS advantage, it doesn't matter. It still loses 25% compared to off, and it's beneath the Radeon 7900 XTX. The 6700 XT hangs in there against the 3060 Ti, essentially a tie. But when we flip things to high, it looks like the 3060 Ti squeaks ahead, and the 7900 XT is able to outperform the 4080 Super. These results suggest that SSR disrupts the efficiencies of GeForce's SMP, at least with the high-end cards. To confirm this, I disabled SMP on the 4080 Super to see what would happen. And yeah, there isn't that much of a performance drop because it's not really working well. All right, so let's talk about performance gains. What can we do to increase our FPS? And one of them is resolution scaling. iRacing added this feature a couple years ago and it is deployable within VR. They've implemented AMD's FSR, Nvidia has DLSS, but in this case, this will run on any video card as far as I know. There are four settings, ultra all the way down to performance with the latter being the highest FPS. I'm actually running performance up here right now, and it's a bit of a game. Can you, can you figure out which one it is? If you guessed left, you'd be wrong. That's the native full resolution. The right side is the performance of FSR. You may notice a shimmering. If you look at the suspension and the cars in front, it's not quite as clear. Lighting off of the car body, it's just not quite as crisp. There are compromises to achieve this performance. The simulator's actually running at a lower resolution. A whole bunch of fancy algorithms are increasing it to basically expand it, fill your entire monitor, while still maintaining that resolution you picked. In AAA titles, especially those with Unreal Engine 5, using this kind of technology and even frame generation, inserting fake frames to increase the FPS, it's becoming prevalent. This is becoming something that they just all do and it's finding its way into our simulators, unfortunately. I like the technology, I'm okay with it. I'm glad that iRacing brought it in, but with other simulators, I'm noticing it's a requirement. Anyway, that's my rant. Let's talk about the performance. I tested this at Portimao, but I'm going to leave the Magello uh, Formula 3 at the top just so that you have something to look at and you can keep comparing left to right. At the top, we have native. This is what I've been showing the whole time. Then it's ultra, which is the first stage of FSR, and then performance, which would be the most aggressive stage. That's the image on the right. This is going to help graphics cards that are taxed at 100%. For example, the three entry-level cards at the bottom, the 3060 Ti, the 6700 XT, and the 2070 Super, they all improve over 30% by enabling performance mode. And we even see the 3080 Ti gain significantly from this. However, the 4080 Super and the 7900 XTX do not not. Unfortunately, the quality change with rain is really hard to show with the compression of YouTube, so I'm not even going to bother with the clip. It is there. I don't think it's that bad, actually. I think
think this is a pretty nifty way to increase performance for the rain. But there's some other options you can change in the graphics too. We're back at spa, it's still raining, there's no puddles, SSR is off, and here is some adjustments I've made to the class one settings. And all the testing I had shown, unless otherwise stated, and then with the orange bar, I've added in some more mods. AF, AA, I've dropped those to eight times and two times. Particles are not full, HDR is off, and I've dropped shader quality to high. And by doing those adjustments, I also saw some pretty big gains. Note that this testing is at triple 1440p, whereas the FSR was at single 4K. That's why we see the 7900 XT with a GPU busy measured at only 66%. It's astonishing. It's performing worse than a 2070 Super with these settings. That is crazy. Speaking of the 2070 Super, I got one more chart for you guys, and this involves the Popcorn FX system. There's a setting within the INI file for the renderers, and it lets you change from the default zero to one. And what that does is it enables SMP or SPS, this GeForce technology that improves projection performance. It allows that tech to grab the particles and try and improve the performance with them. That will crash the 2070 Super. It has to be zero. The popcorn FX has to be zero. I'm not gonna show you a crashing graphics card. That's a bad omen. But I did wanna show a very small performance increase if you flip it back to one, specifically on the 4080 Super and a little bit on the 3080 Ti as well. All right, let's just draw some general conclusions to finish this off. What I would say is, yes, I would still take a, a 4080 Super or a high-end NVIDIA product for triple monitors, even if we lose the SPS advantage with SSR. When it comes to Radeon, the 7900 XTX can outperform the 4080 Super, but it's only in specific situations, and I'm generally disappointed that I'm unable to get the most out of that card. It makes me curious about the 7800 XT. Does that card go 100% GPU busy or does it suffer from the same problem? I, I don't know. If you're running an older card, maybe looking for an upgrade, I think the 4070 series is compelling. It's around the 3080 Ti performance. Just keep in mind, we're only like three or four months away from the next gen. All right, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and support me if you can. And if you want specific advice uh, for your setup, reach out through my website.